logos. <coughs> Branding. Sorry, let me start with logos. <laughs> you, you have an idea. You created a business. You're creating a product, and you're ready to put it out there. Whether you're going to craft shows, trade shows, online, no matter what, have a logo. Name your business. Does everybody have a name for their business? Or like a list of names? Are you like polling people what should be my business? Um, do they have puns? Sorry. Um, we had a lot of fun naming our business. So let's start with that. Let's start with the name. So Serafina Fire Art. Serafina is, has my name in it, but it's what my grandfather used to call me. I had a lot of business names that were puns on felting, believe me. Between the stabbing and the felting and the E-W-E-U um, for sheep, there are so many puns. <laughs> but, and then I had things like, you know, overly descriptive, like, just like Sarah's felting pairs. That wasn't one of them, but let's just say. So avoid, try to avoid you know, your personal name or your personal location or a, a complete description of this is what I do. The reason is you might grow. You might not do that anymore. You might do something different. You might include something else. So a more broad name is going to be a bigger umbrella for your business. Um, a Burlington Coat Factory is one of like, if you, if you look this kind of thing up online, that's an example. Burlington Coat Factory was coats, and now they're, they're basically like to do max commercials, but they're still called Burlington Coat Factory. Um, Southwest Airlines, you know, they fly to England. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, let's see, one of my patients. Make sure, write it down. You know, look at it on a piece of paper, write it down, type it, say it, have somebody else say it. Make sure it's a pretty word. You know, that I love, let me go back, I love the way Serafina looks. Um, and I like to say it. And I like, you know, it's in the sign up there. Um, I like the repetitive, the A's, of the A's and the R's between Serafina and Fiber Art. Um, and I consciously, made Serafina one font and fiber art another because Serafina can be anything. Like I might get into, if I design clothes, it can be Serafina. Fiber art just mentally is separate. We have our business, um, our shop is called the Art House. So that's the, <coughs> old, that's the old days. This is the new days. Um, in the top right, Serafina Art House. So, what you want to create for your business, this is what I get really excited about, is a culture. What is it? Is it, is it like retro and mod? Is it country and, you know, it's a little hard to come from see. So, yeah, like just, you know, rustic and, you know, like our place is full of stuff. I don't know what we are. We're like, you're cool. We're country sheep. I don't know what we are. Um, is it, you know, clean and modern? It can be anything, but be true to it. Be consistent with it. So your, your logo, the font, um, eventually we'll get to your image and the photographs that you use. It should all read and cultivate and represent your company culture. So um, can, I, can I use you as an example? <laughs> so Tacey um, started a new um, soap and what would you call it? Natural skin care line. And she wanted it to be um, the way that, that I remember was sort of spa, fresh, modern, yeah? Yes. Okay, okay. So, um, so as she goes, her packaging, do you have a name? Sure, spot. See? Oh, yeah, perfect. So, um, you know, that all is going to 
read the saint to whoever, however someone comes across it. So very important. This stuff is more. This stuff is free advertising. It's more important than placing an ad in a magazine or, I dare say, than your uh, business plan. <laughs> no, it's just it's it's people will respond to it. Can you tell I'm excited about it? Okay. Um, let's see. I talked about that. Okay. So I wrote this down. The goal is to make some kind of issue read whatever. The goal is to make people believe in your product as much as you do. Through style, imagery, branding, photography, font name, etc. Think of it as a fun game, but it's also extremely important. So we talked about naming. Um, you know, not too descriptive, easy to read, easy to say. We had a few things that were like, you know, weird words that we were like, people aren't going to really know how to say that. And we're always naming things. Like this is called a Zuli tool. Uh, Zuli is the end of my last name, but there were other names that came up that, you know, just we systematically ruled out for one reason or another. We, there's a lot online about the pitfalls of using another language, like it might you know, sound exotic or perfect, but, and maybe it is, um, but it can also be hard for people to say or they just don't get it, they don't understand it. Okay, the logo. Um, I'm very lucky uh, to have a technique person, Talbot, who came back from his other job, thankfully, and that's Talbot on the left. Um, and he, he works with us, and he uses Photoshop, and Kyle is learning Photoshop, so someone find someone who knows Photoshop and make friends, um, make them a date, and have them over, and um, and then tell them what you need. <laughs> so, uh, Talbot helped me design the logo. We started with, um, I'm sorry, I think you guys need to go back and um, We started with some lines that, like, okay, so I'm an artist, so the first thing I did was draw a rabbit, and it was like all shaded and detailed, and the problem is, it's not simple enough. It's not, it's <laughs> gotta be clean and simple, and, it's got to be able to be big or small. Um, it's got to be able to be black and white or color. It's got to be able to go on a t-shirt or a piece of paper or it's on our tool. You know what I mean? Like this, this is important. So then Talbot was like, no, it needs to be more clean, more simple. So we started with some like line that was almost just like the top line of the rabbit. And then it looked like too much like a knife, like a knife symbol. And, so anyway, it evolved. The rabbit is because um, that was the one thing that I was making that sold the most. And this this curled up hair just kind of became uh, became a logo. Or something that I identified with. The blue, the white, and the green are actually, there's a reason. Um, I wanted it to represent a sheep, this is a goat, kind of like it's a sheep, um, in a pasture with a blue sky. So that was the, that was the color scheme. Um, okay, oh wait, there's things I should be showing you. <laughs> See, Kyla put this thing there. Okay, these are some, these are some clever, clever names. Logos. We really like film, that's funny. <laughs> um, I love Pendulum. I love Pendulum. Because they're selling pens, and so the pen is in the name, and the uh, fountain pen tip with the Pendulum in it. And it also, to me, looks like a hand writing. See that? It's like all these like, subtle little things, they work on your brain. And you don't even know it. because. We, oh my gosh, there was some number. It's like 200,000 in like advertising images a day or something like that. But a lot. We we have to filter through that somehow. And so you want to have something that says to people, choose us, and this is why. Okay. 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 
Okay, so we're talking about logo. We talked about naming. We're talking about logo. We talked about color. Um, I don't know what to do. <coughs> so you guys read that word? Do we know what business that is? Production. Production. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah. So color is going to evoke an emotion. Um, let's see what's on that page. Font, so important. There, you can, there's Dove font, there's so many font websites. And you, you will spend hours, like once you've named your business, you will spend hours typing it into these font websites to see what font you like the best. But that is a really important part of your company culture. Like, you know, think about that. Care about that. You can even design your own unarmed is funny. Um, yeah, I don't know what my company is, but I like that. Okay, these are examples of the first letter of a name and, and or logo that we probably recognize just because we've seen it so many times. I mean, Reese's, like that orange and brown, you know, you know that you're a um, Now, Isla, of course, we know Facebook. Um, Isla took the G, the W, and the E. Uh, you cut those off, right? So does everybody know what those are? Google, Walmart, and eBay. Yeah. So anyway, it's it's amazing what how much power this name that you're going to name your business and this font that you're going to use and this color that you're going to make it. Um, how much power it has. Okay. Oh, I jumped ahead. Okay, so no, I didn't. I'm worried about that. Okay. 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 I better slow down. Okay, so let's see. I just want to make sure before I move on that I talked about everything. I talked about color, creates emotion, triggers memories, gives a sensation. Font should fit and further convey your, your culture or style. <laughs> Positioning, does it work on a card? Does it work large or small? Does it work on letterhead? Does it work on your website? In other words, you know, this open, this open circle works so well for us because we can, we can feed things out of it we can we have t-shirts that where it's just centered because it I mean it reads as a a circle basically even though it's you know, crescent. Um, so think about that design element in terms of position, positioning on different things. Um, oh Kyle. Oh yeah, let me put it let me go to the business. Okay. So that's our business house. We've got Serafina, and then I've got the fiber art, and then the art house. And on the back, um, we have website, phone number, address, hours, my name, and a little call me dude, which is sometimes people call the shop. And they're like, the card said call. <laughs> like, no, no, it's just, it's just meant to be. Cute. That's all. We didn't really, if we really wanted you to call us, we would have called you. It's okay. We wouldn't have sent like some pigeon with a carrier pigeon. Um, okay. Simplicity. Can it be scaled up and down? Printed, replicated. Use your logo everywhere. That's the whole point. So that's what branding is. I'm going to just read this because I wrote it better than I can say. Um, branding. The 
The marketing practice of creating a name, symbol, or design that identifies and differentiates your business. The logo is the foundation of your branding practices. Build recognition of your company through navigation, reassurance, and engagement. Your logo does all of that. Help cut through the prol proliferation of thousands of advertisements we see every day. Communicate the intrinsic qualities of your product to assure to the buyer that they have made the right choice. And engage people through imagery to identify with the brand and product. I feel that it also just establishes success. It says, I exist, I'm real, I have a, I have a logo, <laughs> you know, so. Um, and it differentiates you from the competition and conveys the company culture. I think I said that. Hopefully. Um, this, my mom's friend wrote this book. And she's, every time I brought up my logo when I was starting my business, she said, well, you know, Alina Miller wrote a book. <laughs> but I know, so I bought it. This is probably a textbook. It's probably more than any of you ever need, but it's a great book full of um, designing brand identity. That's actually where we got the um, first letter picture. And um, this is listed in your um, resources at the end of your handout. This page has um, a lot of pictorial brands, things that you just recognize. I mean, Greyhound, you know, the Greyhound, the NBC, Peacock, PBS, um, well, good book. Okay. So, okay, branding is just the process of marketing by using your, your logo. We put it on all, everything that Serafina um, is this original Serafina product, something that we invented or produced or whatever. Um, that's terrible. It's on our little bags. It's on our needle holder. Um, our, this is our logo. And this is basically a little poof of wool that is a bunny tail, but also holds, um, holds the needles. We were very, very proud of that one. Um, this is some wire that we sell. So, you know, having it on your packaging, that's just free advertising. It's on our bags. Um, that we send to people. This is this was also an interesting growth in my business. When I first had this idea that I needed to sign my work, um, how do you sign, you know, a wool sculpture. So I looked at bamboo, I looked at fabric, I looked at leather. I ended up with a um, little metal tag that has, um, I'm gonna pass a few of these around, you guys can just pass them around. Um, this one doesn't have a tag on it, but I'll pass it around. Um, and, um, so there's a little metal tag on there. It's, again, my mom, so, so, so practical. She said, don't, you're just increasing your cost by putting this tag on there. This is before, before I, I say BK, before pileup. Um, it was just me in my attic. And, and actually my logo was different then. It was actually before Serafina. And I was like, no, this, this, is, this is important. This lets people know that I'm serious about what I'm doing, that I'm gonna keep doing it, that they have something um, of value that's made, you know, handmade by me. So find some way. If you're woodworking, you know, we do, um, we do a, a, a hot iron brand on our woodwork. So find some way to let people know that it's your product. Uh, yeah, email, emails, letterhead, everywhere. Are we taking a dead horse now? Everybody understand? Okay. Right, I showed you the book. Okay, where will you sell? Who's, who's currently selling? Yeah? Are you doing it in craft shows or online? Or do you mind?
mind crab, crabs and Etsy. Etsy. Okay. And um, do you mind sharing like what what you make? <laughs> I do all kinds of stuff. Okay. Uh, a lot of owls. I do baby toy owls. Owl pillows. I, I knit crochet owls. Okay. I kind of have my own line of owls. Owls. So that's like a big part of your company culture. Your identity. Do you have a logo? I do. I'm not real happy with it. Okay. Like okay. the point you made was I've expanded, and my original name doesn't really go with. Yeah. But I'm doing now at all, so that's, that's yeah. real important. Etsy's, I mean, it's changing, so. Etsy's tough because they you you get that name in the beginning and you can't on Etsy you can't change from it. So when I started on Etsy I was Sarah's art. And I just thought that I, I ended up thinking that was weird. And um, <laughs> but that was old that's still my Etsy username. <laughs> you can't take it. Anybody else have an Etsy shop? No, you have an Etsy shop. Yeah. What can you tell us what's in your Etsy shop? I do fabric postcards and my my Etsy name is Fabric Greetings. Okay. So there's pillowcases for holidays, blankets, the tables, the book booth. Yeah. Neat. Okay. So neat. All right. So um, okay. So craft shows. I did craft shows. Craft shows. You know, you're traveling, you're taking all this stuff, you've got to have, maybe you have to have a tent, maybe not, maybe, you have to, but you have to at least have to have tables, and, you know, maybe it's subject to the weather, you'll have a year where you're like, yes, I'm the best, this is awesome, and then you go back the next year, and you're like, where is everybody? So, but some people, that's what they do, they just do a show circuit, they just travel around and do um, craft shows, so I'm not knocking it, I'm just saying it, for me, it wasn't the direction that I wanted to go. The Felted Animals on Etsy did really well because I was one of a few. Um, jewelry on Etsy I think would be really, really hard. I don't know how so it's probably hard to stand, to stand out. Also, uh, what was that, seven years ago, Eight years ago, Etsy was, I mean, it wasn't new, but it was not like it is now. So it's still a great place because you automatically have people going in there using their search engine. It's all set up for you. You plug in your pictures and your description. It's very easy to use. Um, then you can create reports. It tracks everything for you. It really is. Uh, I liked it. I thought it was a good good place to start. We eventually outgrew it because 20 cents per listing, not that much. Their percentage is not that much. But when I switched from selling finished sculptures to, you know, small bundles of wool and wire, I'm selling lots and lots of items at a smaller price and so that 20 cents added up to the point where I was like, whoa, um, we have astronomical Etsy fees as uh, time to move on. So we started a website. We have our own website. I actually had a website simultaneously. Um, iPage, excellent, easy to use, drag and drop, loved it. Great customer service. Um, if you need a place to set up, to you know, send people, this is my website. You can see my work. You can contact me. Um, I page. I, I really like it. And there's more like that, but that's that's the one that I use. And um, I mean I could go in there and just change the you know, change the front page or anything at all. They have galleries, videos. Um, in the beginning of the whole internet, beginning of on the line, you had to get someone to design your website. And you couldn't use it. Like the web designer had to do it all. It was super expensive. Um, nobody had a website. <laughs> and then these companies, who are probably making tons of money because they found a niche, um, started making websites that are easy to use. So I, I was very happy with iPage. Um, iPage does have a shop, a shopping cart option. Um, we eventually switched to Illusion. 
which is our current website, Volusion. It's a little bit more complex. It's a little bit more involved. Um, this is a, just a screenshot of our um, home page. Um, we can still list items. Uh, we didn't change the home page so, as easily, but um, you pick out a template that you like. They can customize it somewhat. It's kind of like the next level of our public. Also, there's a lot. Um, I mean, use Google, but I mean, really, like, I found I page by Googling top 10 best, you know, do it yourself websites. <laughs> And there was an article with the top ten, you know, just, you know, that Google search bar is like this long, but you could type something this long into it and, um, and get a good result. So, um, I can't remember, do you remember what else we looked at with Volusion? I mean, when we were looking at Volusion, like I'm just trying to think of more options. Um, no? I can think of shopping cart. Names, yeah, but not necessarily um, web hosting. Anyway, WordPress. WordPress. Yeah, is WordPress <coughs> is a you had to plug. System. You had to plug everything into it. Yeah. Versus, yeah. Volusion yeah. is the software. Yeah. Um, which is dot five, which is dot five. Yeah. Do you like that? Yeah. What's it called? Dot five. Dot five is another one to check out. Um, Okay, so Etsy, your own website. I might be putting this part before the course, because next we're going to talk about social media and how to get people to find your website and use it. Um, Amazon is now <coughs> selling handmade. We looked into it and we're like, oh, we should be on Amazon, because uh, everybody uses Amazon. Two things happened simultaneously. My husband went and worked there. Not like work for Amazon, but had to go into the building and, and do some work there. And um, came home the worst I've ever seen. Uh, totally <coughs> a mess. And I'm putting this out there on YouTube. <laughs> we looked into it, and there's all this questionable um, stuff in the contract. Like, they own, I mean, what is it? Like, they own what you do, basically. Yeah, we, we suspect it was to cover in case you put something out there and then someone takes your idea, <coughs> that they essentially yeah. aren't responsible for that. But when you actually read the handmade on Amazon, it's pretty much we it's own scary. the rights to it. I mean, it's you're, you're kind of giving a lot of what you have away so that it could theoretically be replicated. I don't know. We suggest reading it before yeah. you sign up on Amazon. Yeah, read it carefully. I mean, I and I shop Amazon. I'm not anti-Amazon, but <laughs> I should have come in with, with with more information before I said don't do this. But this is why we uh, did not. Also, um, I read a, from a few other people who had experience with Amazon that one of the problems was that becomes their customer service. Your customer service is Amazon, not you. So that can be um, that could be a problem. I think you lose your company culture. I think that's why, like, to me, that's more important. Um, okay. What are other online options? Does anybody have a brick and mortar store? I know I know does. Anybody else have a brick and mortar? You do? Yeah? I don't actually make the items. Oh, okay. Are you in, um, like, retail or? Okay. In Chesapeake City. Cool. Um, so do you, do you mind if I ask you a question? Um, do you have anything there that brings people in besides the fact that you're in Chesapeake City and people like to walk around Chesapeake City? Like do you host? Um, it's very small. So it's very small. <laughs> okay, so you're happy when there's only two people in there because otherwise <laughs> I'm so <sorry. laughs> Okay, so if we, we have a brick and mortar store, we're way off the beaten path um, on Appleton Road, and we do not rely on foot traffic. You do mm -hmm. in Upton. But and we also are trying to drive them. You do. I mean, you have openings, you have workshops, you have, you've got to bring people in. Now, maybe if you were um, on Main Street in Newark or, you know, 
I don't know, Chesapeake City is, Northeast, there's usually people walking around. There's locations where you can be that are going to automatically bring customers to you. Um, but we are mainly mail order. We have our shop, we love it. We get people in there um, through open houses, uh, basically like, you know, the show. Um, and I host workshops there almost uh, once a week. So that part is some people in. But um, our brick and mortar space is um, basically our workspace and our shipping, you know, shipping from the internet. 